नमस्ते हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम अगेन टू माय एन कोर्स रोल ऑफ क्राफ्ट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग मॉड्यूल 20 टुडे एंड इट विल बी अ समरी ऑफ वीक फोर सो वी विल सी मिसलेनियस केस स्टडीज दैट वी हैड सीन थ्रू आउट द वीक विच फोकस ऑन इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर एंड बिल्डिंग क्राफ्ट सो द ब्रॉड कंटेंट्स Again, we'll have a visual repository of space-making crafts and interior architecture, and we'll explore them through varied case studies from India. They are miscellaneous. All the uh, summary of what all we have been seeing throughout the week, and we have some references. So, this is case study from Agra, which we had elaborately discussed in one of the previous modules. But since I am putting the miscellaneous case studies from India, and this one is really very uh, exemplary as far as we are talking about building crafts and interior architecture. So I have put some slides again from Agra, and here we see interior architecture and building crafts and their profound interrelationship. We see the filigree work over here. We see stone crafts, exquisite stone crafts, and we see the pictures on the next slide. So. we can see how much detailing is there here this is the main entrance and we see the stone inlay this is very exquisite stone inlay quite detailed out and in depth we have lot of stone carvings we see different kinds of space making elements different kinds of arches we have hindu arch we have mughal arch we have this kind of trefoil arch and we have columns we see the columns over here very intricate exquisitely carved column capitals we see this carving further on the arches and the spaces between the two arches this is the entrance that here we see the zoom in so very monumental different kinds of space making principles we understand over here we have this plinth which also has lot of stone carving we see here on the ceilings again different kinds of arches so it's very eclectic eclectic space making elements different craft forms also the construction methods join the details structural details here we see another you know motifs these are like very intricately carved column capitals we see them throughout the building at different floor levels the railings here we see the structures the dome the chhatris all the different space making elements and different details of stone crafts we see across this building over here then we saw a few buildings from gujarat so these are some space making crafts and interior architecture examples from gujarat we specifically saw this one from sidpur and we saw how in this one small space space itself there are so many craft forms and so many techniques that have been uh, employed like plaster of paris work brick masonry fret work gilding painting wood carving glass painting here the brass casting glass blowing technique glass etching marquetry work ceramics we see details in ceramics carpets upholstery over here curtains wood joinery so all these different materials and you know techniques and uh, the details they create this space so it's building crafts and interior architecture and we see a perfect marriage here different pictures of the furniture pieces over here we see lot of details then there are these are some other buildings that we see you know uh, from gujarat and they have details another building craft details over here this again is a very beautiful aesthetic building we see a color palette over here we see lot of space making elements the kind of spaces that are created and all the detailing of the craft here we see the carving we see timber as a material here we see stone and then we see this uh, structure integrated detail of the stone craft all these details we see over here and there are several other buildings i mean and we talk about gujarat and especially amdavad we all know that recently it received the uh, designation of the you know first heritage city from india which has been recognized worldwide so it has very exemplary uh, cases you know uh, that can be studied and understood and learned and carried forward in contemporary times 
these are few other pictures from Gujarat and we see here furniture elements, we see the structural details, space making elements, we see details like this and we also try to, these I mean these pictures in itself they are like photo essays. So, we can understand a lot about the spaces through these pictures also. So, this play of light and shadow that is happening, the kind of tiling and the inlay work that is happening. Here we can see again space making elements, the arches, the columns, this railing. We can see the uh, stained glass work over here. So, we see different kinds of art craft forms and construction details and space making elements. They all together contribute to a very rich space which is experiential, functional, structurally stable, aesthetic. So, all these pictures in itself like all of us should actually do exercises and assignments like this and uh, we may have one of the assignments like this where we will have photo essays and we have to decode them and try to learn through them. These are another pictures and these are pictures of a mosque. This is from outside, very famous mosque, huge, gigantic, monumental. This is the interior and again we see the details of carvings over here and how stone, the local stone has been used for construction and all the details over here, the joinery details, how the space making happens through different elements. You know, the priest stands over here and the, how the floor is laid, what is the structural grid of that space. From outside we see it's very ornamental, a lot of stone carvings at all different levels and here we see details, here on the main arch we see a lot of details. So, all these are some interesting case studies from different parts of India and where we try to understand this interrelationship between building crafts and interior architecture and also we try to understand the involvement of uh, craft persons, artisans, communities, their uh, knowledge of materials, their skills, the kinds of tools and techniques they would have used and then the final built environment that we get is the sum total of all this. Again some more pictures of the same mosque and we see a lot of construction details over here. What is the structural grid? From inside we see over here some geometric motifs and carvings done. These are exquisite pictures. So, here we see this stone jali and this beautiful play of light and shadow at different times and we see like you know the different panels which are joined together and then this beautiful jali is created. So, there is a very famous Siddhi Sayyad ki jali and which we saw in the case studies from Gujarat, the module specifically focusing on that. And it has been documented, studied several times, it is a masterpiece and it has been uh, constructed in several pieces which have been joined together and the joinery is so fine that one would not even know, you know, where is that line of joint that is happening. That is pure craftsmanship and the skill of the creator. That is how that beautiful tree of life in the Siddhi Sayyad Jali got created. And here also we see, we see this beautiful dome structurally transferring the load through this column and then we see all these jalis which you know help in ventilation and lighting and the kind of mass and void ratio that, has, that is achieved over here is also very scientific and the, all the different kinds of rich details you know the carvings and the craft forms that go into the making of this space is pure magic and it requires a lot of efforts and time and therefore these buildings you know they have timeless quality. So, they can never be uh, out of demand, out of time, out of fashion, they have a timelessness, they are, these are classic buildings. So, these beautiful jalis here, they are pure you know uh, pure symphony of the uh, crafts, the building crafts and the interior architecture elements. Some more pictures where we can see the details of the motifs in the jali that have been carved out. So, we see a lot of geometric motifs, we see a lot of floral motifs and there is this square grid which has been followed here and each panel is painstakingly handcrafted. Another picture which shows this beautiful play of light and shadow. 
Here we see the inbuilt furniture element and this is done out of stone and this is again you know building crafts and interior architecture. We have the seating element, furniture element which is embedded within the structure and then it has this beautiful carving on the edge supported by you know the column and the base structurally. So the entire system when we learn to decode these systems we will get to know you know what goes into making of even a small element like this. So these are interesting details. Now we shift to Rajasthan and Shikhavati is one region of Rajasthan which is very famous for its havelis, for, uh, for its paintings, narrative paintings, uh, different art and craft forms. So these are some images, there is this one drawing also from Shikhavati region and there are different havelis over there and we see this you know paintings in natural pigments, we see the timber and timber crafts over here, lot of carving and we see some metal work over here, the hardware over here in the frame we saw the uh, CD metal work again here in the hardware. So we see uh, the paintings which are done in lime plaster and it is called Araish. We saw the timber craft, the carvings and we see the metal works over here which are quite rich and the entire combination of all these art craft forms create this rich interior architecture. This is another uh, Haveli from Shikhavati region and this is the entrance door and we can see how intricate are the wood carvings and we see the belief systems are still the same that we saw in Uttarakhand also. So here again this is the main door and we have the god motifs over here to prevent the evil from entering inside and standing at the door we get a glimpse of this beautiful interior space flanked by a central courtyard and we see a lot of space making elements like these columns and arches and we see the structural elements like bracket and lot of paintings and motifs and enrich beautiful natural pigments. Not all of them are original natural pigments, they have been repainted now with other kinds of paints but lot of the paintings still have very original uh, paintings and they are still done in on the lime plaster and they are uh, still done with the natural pigments and they had very specific palette of blue, you know the different kinds of blue colors and the family of blue color, different tints and tones of blue, uh, tints and uh, tones of blue colors that go into the making of these paintings. They were like very distinct color palette they have used the people and the community which had created these paintings initially. So these are different paintings that I was talking about. And they also talk about different stories. So this is like Krishna Radha Leela. This is the game of Chaucer. So that is being talked about here, depicted here. This is very fascinating. We see a train over here. So a lot of things are also out of curiosity, imagination and uh, something that was starting to happen at the time when the Britishers came or something that's not yet there in India but people wanted it to come. So a lot of curiosity and imagination and we have a lot of memory associations, aesthetics, we have natural motifs, motifs from nature, a lot of floral motifs over here. So and we see some interior architecture elements here, a built form being depicted over here. We have stories of the kings and the gods. So these are all different narratives and these are surface crafts that we discussed one category, surface crafts which is uh, basically narrative in nature and uh, these are the different Havelis in Chikhavati where these can be seen. This is another Haveli which has now been you know uh, converted into a hotel and some work has been done on it, it is not the original uh, Haveli with the original paintings and motifs. But structurally still we see a lot of space making elements that define the character of these Havelis. So you know we see the connection with the sky and the courtyard how it is centrally placed and then this arcade which runs throughout and this central place which creates an enclosure like the distinct characteristics like we see in the Havelis of Rajasthan. So those are still there but the 
paintings and the color palettes that is absent from here which is taking away the character of Shikhavati Havelis from this particular one which is contemporary and it is a case of adaptive reuse. These are the ones that I was talking about are original and we can see the difference between this one and this one here. So, they have a very unique character. We see the metal craft, again the surface craft, the narratives, the paintings, we see a lot of timber work and there are all different kinds of categories of crafts that we can see in this interior architecture, um, structure based, structure integrated, then uh, we have surface integrated, we have narrative crafts, we see different kinds of uh, crafts that can be seen over here. So, they are purely building crafts and we see how the interior architecture quality and experience is enhanced through them. These are some pictures now from City Palace Udaipur and uh, the pictures are not very good quality, sorry about that, but we can still get a hang of what are the different kinds of building crafts that we can see. So, there is mirror work, here we see a jali with the mirror stained glass, here this is mirror and this is stained glass over here. Then we see these tiles and we discuss the category of this, these building craft forms which are surface clad, which are surface integrated. So, now you can take a call on that. Here also we see the mirror work, the colored mirrors over here and this is very exquisitely seen on this entire, you know, this arch and this door frame. Everything over here that we see are some building crafts and they fall into one or the other category. We see also the paintings. Again, some paintings on the ceiling, we see the stained glass and the play of light and shadow, we see the stone craft carvings over here, we see these blue tiles over here which are unique in themselves, again a stone jali, some uh, mirror and glass work, again here stone work. So, we see a lot of inlay work that can be seen in this palace and this is blue glass inlay work. This is inlay work again with tiles, this is very detailed out and to protect these now, you know the palace authorities have also put a panel that nobody can touch them and because see few of them are getting completely damaged. So, it is very important to restore and protect them. So, this is again an extensive work done by Drona, they have been working on city palace Udaipur since a very long time and they have really contributed in conservation and restoration of this palace which is one of the biggest palaces in India and Udaipur is a very beautiful city which has lot of cultural tourism and many tourists come to this palace. Other details in this palace, we see other different kinds of craft forms. In the module which was specific to Rajasthan, we have discussed the details. So, we see lot of pictures over here which refresh our memory about all these building crafts in the interior architecture of city palace Udaipur, Rajasthan. We saw some details of this courtyard with the peacocks, the meenakari work, the mirror work, the glass work and also the space making elements that go into the creation of this beautiful courtyard and the building crafts. Uh, this is Mysore palace, very famous Mysore palace. It also has lot of space making elements and building crafts. So, we see onion domes over here, then we see the stained glass in the interiors. Here again, we see the miniature arches over here, we see the balconies. So, there are a lot of space making elements, we see a structural aesthetics also as well as when we go in the interiors, there are a lot of surfaces that are visually very appealing and very aesthetic. These are the pictures of the interiors. Now, we see these tiles on the floor, they are very famous traditional Atangudi tiles and we, very few families are left which uh, still practice them. These are all handmade and we do not get to see them often now. So, they have a very unique vocabulary and a very distinct visual appeal. It is not uh, probably achievable in what we get as the manufactured tiles, you know, in contemporary times. So, these are all handmade and all the beautiful patterns that are seen over here. Here the different kinds of again handmade tiles and the cladding done, the interior courtyard and all these space uh, making elements, you know, the huge columns and the arches and we see such details on the ceiling. We see the metal work also, 
this is a central you know inside the building we have this skylight and then there is lot of intricate stained glass work over here which i just just mentioned in the previous slide that the in interiors has very exquisite stained glass work in mysore palace few other pictures we see here column base and shaft which is fluted with this golden what to say golden uh, lines or wires and here we see this beautiful intricate carving this is the stained glass work that i was mentioning we see this uh, timber craft over here the handmade tile work over here this amazing ivory work on timber we see here we see lot of nice metal hardware so again the different materials their knowledge uh, the knowledge of the craft persons to handle those materials different kinds of techniques that have been employed the stained glass work the wood carvings the metal work all of this has resulted in creating a timeless interior architecture piece like this some more pictures again here so beautiful ivory work again so all these these building crafts and cultural activities and building uh, the belief systems of the community and the craft persons they have created this amazing palace now some uh, case studies from uttarakhand that we saw so i'll be just brushing up royal orchids in dehradun so we see lot of stone and timber work here and very interesting joinery also we saw this bikaner sarai in haridwar and we saw different details of stone craft as well as you know metal craft in this uh, building we saw this gurudwara in dehradun and we saw some nice frescoes and some interesting space making elements Uh, in this one we saw the pictures and we saw again the very intricate uh, motifs and fresco work we also saw some stone craft in this uh, gurudwara but which is the later edition we saw these amazing pictures from dhar chula which here show the intricate wood carvings and different space making elements we saw the um, details of the jageshwar temple and this is also very famous temple and richly uh, crafted out of stone we saw this beautiful mahashudevta temple and we saw the different uh, space making elements and different ornamentation and different details that are present uh, on the you know uh, building and different construction details we also saw uh, one old haveli from roorkee and there are couple of them uh, actually few quite few of them which are there in the old roorkee and we saw the structural details and we also saw the building crafts we saw the timber craft we saw the stone craft we saw some more uh, traveling travelers in or sarais and we saw the rich fresco work how it is done and we also saw some construction details of what they are made of what were the construction materials used we saw these very interesting pictures of solani aqueduct from roorkee and we again saw some joinery details some metal work stone the brick work we saw some hill settlements from uttarakhand and we tried to understand the local materials and how they construct these uh, built forms especially here we are talking about the roof form we also just brushed up and uh, saw a few slides on koti banal architecture which we have been anyway discussing about we saw this village malari and there is one residence over there and we saw the details of the koti banal style of architecture and the interior what is done by uh, the community and the way they use the local uh, materials so we saw this you know repository of different case studies from different uh, places Uh, in india and all of them have these unique interior architecture style they have their own distinct palette of art and craft forms they have their own distinct palette of materials and uh, the stories which are uh, associated with each one of them so throughout all these previous modules and especially this one where we are talking about case studies we were just trying to uh, create a plethora of different interior architecture styles and different art and craft forms so that we could have this uh, creation of repository of different cultural and creative industries of india and all of us can contribute in our own ways so that we have a rich 
resource hub, we document them, we understand them, we study them and we try to take them forward in whichever possible ways we can. Obviously, there will be some modifications either in the material palette or in the morphology or in the interpretation or expression. But the, the fact is that we have such rich knowledge systems and we have such skills and we have such uh, interesting art and craft forms. So, in whichever way we want to continue them, but it is important that we link back to them and do not let them languish and eventually find people who still work with them and create employments. So, if we as architects during our projects, if we can make this a thumb rule that you know we will uh, employ certain craft persons and they will be the inherent and innate part of our projects like architect Nimish Patel does, Abhikram Architects. So, that is a very interesting way of creating interior architecture which also contributes in the uh, recognition of creative and cultural industries, creating employment and creating timeless interior architecture. I would like to end up with this interesting quote, always design a thing by considering its next larger context, a chair in a room, a room in a house, a house in an environment, an environment in a city plan. So, it is very important also to think about the context in which we are situating a design. Architecture is not like physics or mathematics. Even though it uses technology and engineering, it is an art. And because we live in buildings, work in buildings, even celebrate the spirit in buildings, architecture is a very human pursuit. It is in the humanities. So, this is what sums up when we talk about the human involvement, creativity, imagination and community involvement. Our next module, it will focus on craft and technology in interior architecture decoding systems. So, it will be very interesting to know how we decode systems embedded within interior architecture and craft and technology. Some references for all of us. Now, this slide is specific to what we discussed today case studies from Rajasthan and uh, Gujarat, Uttarakhand. So, we have something on Thikri Kaam, city palace museum that we saw, glass making technique, something from Uttarakhand and Himachal uh, Pradesh where we see timber and stone uh, Koti Banal architecture. So, these are some specific references other than that. the consolidated list. Thank you.